Number 77. Explain the difference between electron pair geometry and molecular structure. Pretty easy enough, right? We just have to know the difference between electron pair geometry and molecular structure. So it basically comes down to um, your electron pair regions. Electron pair geometry will talk about a molecule's total. Um, I'm going to say total things here around the central atom. All right. And what are those things? Well, there's only two things that can basically surround a central atom, right? You could either have bonds, like a single bond, a double bond, a triple bond, or you could have lone pairs. And to together, right, the bonds and the lone pairs, they make up the total number of electron pairs. And that's what this column is all about. So this will give you a heads up as to what your electron pair geometry would be. It always takes the total amount of things, which is the bonds and the lone pairs, and puts a name to it, all right? So with your electron pair geometry, you will basically, you know, assume, actually, I said it over here, you will assume total things. So for example, we'll do two examples. If we have um, CH4, and then we'll have NH3. And then maybe if I just move, if I move this one up a little bit, I could fit H2O down below. Okay, so let me just make a chart real quick. Three-tier chart. Perfect. And the first one will be my electron pair geometry. I'm just going to put EPG. And the second one will be my molecular structure. Let's see if they're the same or different. So CH4, which I will draw up top here, CH4 should have a carbon in the middle. If we know how to draw the Lewis structures, it would have carbon in the middle surrounded by four hydrogens. Now, when you're talking about electron pair geometry and molecular structure, you only look at the central atom. This atom has four things connected to it, technically, right? One single bond here, one single bond here, another one, and another one. So methane, or CH4, has four things, and in this case, the things represent the total number of electron pairs. Its electron pair geometry would take into consideration all of those. So that would always be the first, um, you could say, column right next to the number of things or electron pairs. So in this case, your electron um, pair geometry would be tetrahedral. But now let's see if the molecular structure is the same exact idea. Now in this case, now you would classify whether you have lone pairs or not. So this one was total. This one will tell you your electron pair geometry. Now say if there's any lone pairs, and that will tell you um, how to find a molecular structure. So in this case, it has zero lone pairs. That would help you find the molecular structure. So in this case, I'm still looking for two. Sorry, I'm still looking for four. And I narrowed it down to these three things. But now I see that methane, the carbon in the middle, has zero lone pairs. So the molecular structure is also tetrahedral. So in this case, they are exactly the same. But now let's look at NH3. NH3 has three hydrogens and one lone pair. Electron pair geometry considers all things, no matter if it's a bond or a lone pair. And the molecular structure focuses on how many lone pairs. So for my electron pair geometry, how many things are around this central atom? Well, it's three single bonds and one lone pair. So that's still four total things, right? Or four electron pairs. So I'm just where I was with methane, and I always take the first one. So that's tetrahedral. So they have exactly the same electron pair geometry, but now the molecular structure has to go with how many lone pairs I have. And in this case, I have one lone pair. So four total electron pairs, but one lone pair I'm now down to here. 
And they say trigonal pyramid here. I like to call it trigonal pyramidal. It's, it's basically the same thing. Trigonal pyramidal. But do you see how now the molecular structure for CH4 and NH3 are different? And then last but not least, we'll do water, which has two hydrogens connected to an oxygen. Let's find the electron pair geometry, which takes into consideration everything. You have two bonds and two lone pairs. So that's a total of four things. Four things electron pair geometry is tetrahedral. So that's exactly the same. But now since it has two lone pairs, the molecular structure would be in this region and we go down to four and now it's bent or angular i call it bent and there you go so as you can see the electron pair geometry for these three molecules are the same but the molecular structure is different and that's the difference between them so electron pair geometry focuses on how many total electron pairs total things around the central atom while the molecular structure focuses on you could either say the lone pairs around the central atom or the total atoms. Either one is correct. All right, and that one takes care of number 77. So thanks so much for tuning in, guys. Hopefully this helped. If you want, subscribe to the channel. It will help us out a lot, and I thank you for that. We're almost at 200 subscribers. That's pretty cool. Um, yeah, we get excited for the little things. And yeah. Have an awesome day. Keep studying hard. You guys got this. I'll see you guys all in the next question.